you know, nobody ever told me that, you know, raising children would be so challenging. If you're a parent and you sincerely love your kid, then you you feel me. You you know where I'm coming from. You know that you know to do things right, you know, you're going to you're going to be faced with some tough times. You're going to be faced with some exhausting nights and days. You know, I I I often think about, you know, when I was a kid like <laughs> Uh, not having a care in the world, doing the things I really wanted to do. You know, my folks, they did their best, of course, by giving me a, a a home, making sure I was fed, making sure I had clothes, entertainment, et cetera. And, you know, me and my wife, we are, you know, trying our best to make the, the same thing occur as well when we, um, you know, just on a day-to-day basis with our kids. You know, we have three, 17, 10, and 8. And we often have this conversation like about parenthood, how incredibly, how incredibly like rewarding it is, but how difficult it is. And if you're a parent out there, I know that you feel me. I know you understand where I'm coming from. And and I guess we got to look at it like this, like kids are little people. Like these are the individuals that are going to shape and shift the future like these are the people that are going to be the leaders of the world and the amount of time that we invest in them is vital it is it's so important it's imperative that we take that we take this seriously as parents i remember when I was about to have my first son and my mom, I was about 20 years old and my mom was like, (laughs) you know, I remember telling her, I thought she was going to be upset. She wasn't mad, but she was more like, well, here we are. (laughs) And she said, you know, it's no longer about you. It's about, you know, this kid now It's not about you. And, um, But I knew in my heart, even at that age, you know, even before 20, that I wanted to be a dad. I know I wanted a family of my own. Like, it was always a desire of me to have a wife and and children. Like, some people, they grow up and they'll say, well, I don't want any kids. I don't want a wife or a husband. But, no, I always wanted a wife and always wanted children. But, of course, you know, the comprehension at the age of 20 just wasn't there as far as how challenging it would be raising not one, not two, but but three kids. You know, our last child was not planned. You know, that was a bit of a <laughs> that was a bit of a surprise, you know, but it is what it is, right? Um but yeah, you know, here we are today and I'm I'm bringing this up because I guess, like, as a father, I don't want to mess up, you know. I don't want to say I could have, should have, would have. I don't want to leave stones unturned. And, you know, some days I'm tired. (laughs) And I get up really early in the morning, and then sometimes I come home late. And you often question, like, you know, am I doing a good job as a dad? Or if you're a woman watching this, or am I doing a good job as a mother? You, you ask yourself these questions. And, you know, I used to ask myself those questions. And not anymore because my own kids have confirmed to me that, you know, I am, in fact, a, a good father. And my wife is a, a good mom. And they demonstrate that through their actions. They demonstrate that through their words and the fact that they, they're all just, you know, happy kids at the end of the day. But, you know, despite being happy kids, you know, there's the other side of parenthood that, you know, you don't hear talked about a lot. And I think it's because we're in the trenches and we're not really concerned about what people think. And a lot of us really don't ask for advice or help or potentially don't know anybody that could help us in these positions you know and you know my kids 
like I said, three different ages, three different personalities, trying to like love them equally, but also individually is something that takes time to, to, um, to get used to, you know, example, like report cards just came out and my son, my, one of my kids, my middle son made AB on a road for the second time this year. And he's doing amazing. He's accelerating. He's enthusiastic. He loves school. He loves the people. He just wants to do great. And um, my younger son is struggling in school really bad. And um, you know, I don't, I don't tell a lot of people that, but I'm also not going to be that parent that just celebrates their child making AB on a row. Like I'm not that person that puts my kids' report cards on social media. I'm just not going to do that. But I don't want to make it seem as if we are just this perfect family with and, and all of like there's just no complaints. Like we literally have like one kid that's great academically and then my youngest that's just um he's really really having a hard time in school and he's been struggling for um a number of years to be honest. Uh my oldest son is great academically, um A's and B's. And um, he's just, you know, he's terrific. And um, I had a moment the other day where my middle son came to me and he's like, hey, look at my report card. And he was so happy. He wanted to show me and he showed me his ribbons and and everything. And of course, you know, I'm just celebrating him. And I said, great job. I love you. And then I looked at my youngest son's report card. And, you know, of course, there was some not so good grades. And he's like, where's my ribbon? You know, I didn't get a ribbon, you know, and then he said something that just almost that really broke my heart it Didn't almost, but it did. He said, I'm bad. And I'm like, wow. Um, so I, I told him, you know, to come here, come to me. And, you know, I gave him a hug. I held him. And, you know, I told him, I said, you're not bad, son. You know, you just you just need work, baby. You just need to keep trying hard. You just don't, don't give up. And, you know, his, his teacher's so great. You know, she's so compassionate, older woman. And, you know, we saw her the day um, at their school field day. And she's like, you know, we're never going to give up on him. Just keep praying for him that he does better um, because he has the potential. And we all believe he has the potential. But, you know, for whatever reason, he's just not, it's not clicking. He's not really interested in just doing this work for some reason so I had a moment I'm like okay how am I going to handle this situation because I don't want I don't want my son who's academically not doing that well I don't want him to feel bad but I also don't want to punish my son who is doing great academically you know so I had to because we love to like give our kids things, you know, when they do great in school. So I bought my son something and I, I said, are you willing to share this with your brother? He said, yeah, sure. So, um, you know, just deciphering through things like that, because I know as a kid, um, if I made bad grades, you know, I, I got in trouble. But in this case, like I don't I, I can't punish my son especially if he has an underlying like learning disability you know he he really does need help like he needs like hands-on help like all the time to do his work but it's just a part of fatherhood you know parenthood of course and my oldest son he got in some trouble last week he doesn't get in trouble by the way you know all school year he he has these headphones which he got for Christmas, you know, these, these beats, which we know are, you know, not cheap, but, um, his uncle bought them, so he wears them to school, and I remember asking him several times, like, hey, are you supposed to have those at school, because I do know that kids have the, um, phones and stuff like that, I know it's just a new generation, everyone has a phone, but I wasn't so sure about these, he's like, yeah, um, a lot of kids have them, it's not a problem, so I'm like, okay, whatever you say. And he gets written up for not taking his headphones off. And he's like, well, that teacher just started stricken in their rules. And all of a sudden, and he said, he just, you know, he claims that he didn't take his headphones off. 
and my son said he did, so it's just his word against his, and I try to contact the teacher, the teacher doesn't get back to me, and then it just gets um, downgraded from a referral to a, a warning, so it's okay, but I specifically told my son, at first I took these away from him for a week, and I said, when I give these back to you, I don't want you to take these to school, and he agreed with me, he said, okay literally told him this last night you know most of the time I, my wife picks him up from school he's a high schooler but today um, I needed to leave home earlier and I left home and I picked him up and I looked under his hood I'm like do you have your headphones and he's like um I had him in the backpack and I'm like no I told you not to take them to school so that what was supposed to be a moment Ended up me lecturing him for 10 minutes in the car before I had to go to work. So I didn't get to work early at all. So he has to, um, I told him I'm taking these away from the, uh, <laughs> for the whole year. So you can't have them anymore. Uh, but unlike, you know, me growing up and a lot of us out here, especially those of you who grew up in the black community, um, where mama said, no, that was just no, but just because. Or when dad said no, they just said no, just because. Like, I told him, I said, I'm not taking this away from you because I don't love you. I'm taking it away from you because I do love you enough to show you what discipline is and why you need it in your life. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms to not withhold the rod of correction. Like, and that's not just, that's not just a, a whooping folks or just using the belt, but that is just discipline in general right there. Because if you don't show your kids discipline, then they're going to grow up rebellious. And if they can't respect their parents, then they're not going to respect anybody else in the world. And that can turn into a bigger problem. So, um... I said, you're not getting these back to the end of the year, but, you know, there is a way that you can potentially earn them. So he's going to have to really do some hard workouts and stuff like that to really show me that, you know, he wants these back. But um, because I, I, I hate taking things from him because, again, he's not a bad kid and he makes great, you know, good grades. And uh, again, it's just one of those crossroads of parenting that you just you don't, um, you don't really know how to handle. And again, you know, growing up, you know, in a household where things were not explained, there was no explanation. I decided that I was going to take that route of giving him a legitimate explanation as to why I took these away. And not just because, not because I'm trying to be mean, but because you disobeyed me. Uh, you did what you wanted to do. So because of that, I will take these away from you so that you don't do this again. Because um, when you're in the real world, you can't just go doing, you know, whatever it is you want to do. Because if you do, you know, that could either lead you in jail or dead or, you know, something of the sort. And um, I'm going to do all I can to keep my kids out of that position. So I know this is a bit of a different video. Um, you know, usually we're bringing biblical topics. But at the same time, I believe this does kind of line up with that. You know, in the book of Proverbs, it tells us. Uh, to train up a child in the way in which they should go and they should not depart from it. And, and we should be doing that all the time, training our kids to understand discipline, training our kids to understand what no means no or yes means yes or to not delay to do things, but to do things in a timely fashion. Don't just drag your feet and do it. Don't talk back, etc. cetera. And um, yeah, I just wanted to share this with somebody out there who may be a parent. And um, I'm a fairly young parent, too, so it's um, it's interesting, <laughs> to say the least. It really is. All right, folks, I've got to go. If you notice, most, sometimes I do these videos when I drive, uh, but ever since my car accident last week, I've been pretty paranoid, and I had a really good friend that told me. He's like, hey, um, he lives out in the Dominican Republic. You're probably going to see this, Carlos. Um, shout out to you, brother. He's like, every time I see you driving, like on YouTube, I say a prayer for you, and I'm like, okay, bro, I'm not making any more videos driving, I promise, so, but I gotta go to work, y'all have a great day, I love you all, um, we have lots of content coming to, to the channel here pretty soon, uh, the Lord has been putting a lot of different words on my heart, 
And I cannot wait to share them with you all. It's going to be an amazing uh, bout of content coming your way. Um, if you're new, thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so today. See you in the next video. Peace.